Are you feeling nervous about facing math problems during your consulting interview? You're not alone. Many candidates worry about stumbling on numbers under pressure. But here's the good news. Case interview math isn't rocket science. In fact, it's simpler than you might think. We're talking basic algebra, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and working with fractions or percentages. Sometimes you'll need to pull data from a table, make sense of a chart, or calculate trends, but the math isn't something that you haven't encountered by the time you were 13. And if you're thinking, wait, it's been a while since I've done this kind of math, don't stress. In this video, we're breaking down the four types of case math problems you should master. Let's get started. Number one, market sizing. Market sizing is one of the most common types of case interview math problems you'll encounter. It's all about estimating the size of a market, whether that's in terms of annual revenue, units sold, or other metrics, without focusing on how to compete in the market itself. Think of it as putting together a rough blueprint of a market before diving into the details of how you capture a piece of it. You'll often face guesstimate style questions where you have to break down the problem and make reasonable assumptions to arrive at a solid estimate. It might sound a bit daunting at first, but with practice, you'll learn how to approach these problems logically and with confidence. Here are a couple of sample questions to give you an idea of what this looks like. How many smartphones are sold in the United States each year? In this case, you'd break down the problem by considering factors like the population of the United States, the average number of phones a person buys in a year, and how much people spend on smartphones. With these factors, you can come up with an estimate for the total number of smartphones sold annually. How many tennis balls would fit inside a Boeing 747? This is another classic volume estimation question. You'd start by estimating the interior volume of the plane, then figure out the size of a tennis ball. Once you have those numbers, you can estimate how many tennis balls would fit inside. All right, here's something to keep in mind for market sizing. There are actually two main approaches that help you nail these problems, top down and bottom up. Now let's break them down really quick. Top down starts with big picture data. You look at something like the total population of a country or the overall market size and you narrow it down with assumptions, kind of like peeling back layers to get to the core. Bottom up, on the other hand, is more detailed. You start small, let's say the number of stores or the average unit sold, and then you build your way up to an estimate. So why does this matter? Well, each approach has its strengths and knowing when to use one over the other is key, but here's the real secret. It's not about the method itself, it's about how you use it. Both methods can lead you to a solid estimate, but what matters is how clear your logic is and how you walk the interviewer through it step by step. Pro tip, make sure you always explain your thought process. Don't just throw out numbers, tell them how you got there. Whether you're starting from the top or the bottom, the key is being transparent and showing how you logically arrived at your answer. Let's move on to the next type of problem you'll face in case interview. Number two, financial calculations. These are essential in almost every case interview, and luckily they're built around a few key formulas that you can easily memorize and apply. Understanding these calculations will help you quickly analyze companies' financial health and determine if a proposed strategy is likely to be profitable. Here are the key formulas you need to know. Profits equal revenue minus costs. This one's simple. Profits are the money you make after covering costs. Profit margin equals profit profits divided by revenue. The profit margin gives you a percentage showing how much profit a company makes for every dollar of revenue. Market share equals revenue for XYZ company divided by revenue for all companies in the market. This tells you what portion of the total market revenue is owned by a particular company. Growth rate equals new minus old slash old. This formula helps you calculate the percentage of growth or decline in revenue, profits, or any other financial figure over time. For example, the revenue growth rate is calculated as as this year's revenue minus last year's revenue divided by last year's revenue. Here are some examples of financial math calculations to help you see how these formulas work in practice. A firm with $100 million in revenue and $80 million in cost has profits of $20 million. In this case, you just subtracted the cost from the revenue. 100 million minus 80 million equals 20 million in profits. A firm with 20 million in profits and 100 million in revenue has a 20% profit margin. To calculate the profit margin, you divide the profits by the revenue. 20 million divided by 100 million equals 0 0.20 or 20%. A firm with 100 million in revenue in an industry with 400 million in total revenue has a 25% market share. Here, you divide the company's revenue by the total industry revenue. 100 million divided by 400 million equals 0.25 or 25%. A firm that made 
made 100 million this year and 90 million last year had an 11% growth rate. To find the growth rate, subtract the previous year's revenue from the current year's revenue, then divide by last year's revenue. So 100 million minus 90 million divided by 90 million equals 0.11 or 11%. These types of financial calculations are common in consulting case interviews because they quickly give you a snapshot of a company's financial standing. Here's a game-changing tip I can give you for mastering financial calculations in case interviews. Focus on understanding the relationships between revenue costs and profits rather than just memorizing formulas. When you grasp how these elements are connected, the math becomes intuitive. For example, understanding that a higher profit margin means the company is making more from each dollar of revenue helps you solve the problem faster and more accurately. By focusing on the big picture, you're thinking strategically, not just plugging in a number. This approach will make financial calculations feel natural and help you stay confident even under pressure. You got this. Number three, investment analysis. Investment analysis is crucial in case interviews, especially if you're evaluating whether a company should invest in a new project or expand into a new market. These calculations help determine how long it will take to recover the initial investment and whether the return justifies the expense. Here are the key formulas you need to know for investment analysis. Break-even equals investment cost divided by annual profit. This formula helps you determine how many years it will take for a company to recover its investment based on its annual profit. Return on investment, ROI, equals revenue minus investment costs divided by investment costs. ROI gives you a percentage that shows how much return you get for each dollar invested. The higher the ROI, the better the investment. Let's go over some examples of the investment calculations. A company spends $10 million in cost to enter a business with annual profits of $1 million and has a 10-year payback. To calculate the break-even point, divide the total investment cost by the annual profit. So $10 million divided by $1 million equals 10 years. This means it will take 10 years for the company to break even on its investment. A company that will earn $12 million on a business that it paid $10 million to enter had a 20% ROI. To calculate the ROI, subtract the investment cost from the revenue, then divide by the investment cost. So 12 million minus 10 million divided by 10 million equals 0 0.20 or 20%. This tells you that for every dollar the company invested, it earned a 20% return. Here's a key tip for mastering investment analysis. Always think about the time factor. How quickly can the investment start paying off? When evaluating an investment, the time it takes to see a return is just as important as the financials. You could have a profitable investment on paper, but if it takes years to break even, that's a risk that team might not be willing to take. In case interviews, this is crucial because it allows you to prioritize investments that bring in returns faster, helping your team make more informed decisions. Before diving into the number, pause and ask yourself, how long will it take to recoup this investment? This simple step allows you to quickly assess whether the investment makes sense for the client in terms of both time and money. By considering the time factor, you're able to provide more strategic insights that not only solve the problem, but also align with the client's goals. Time is money, and knowing how to evaluate both will make Make you stand out in your case interviews. Number four, operations problems. Trust me, they're more straightforward than they might first seem. You'll need to remember two key formulas. Capacity in units equals total capacity divided by capacity required to make one unit. Utilization rate equals actual output divided by maximum possible output. So let's go through a quick example. Imagine you have a machine that produces one widget every five minutes. Over an eight hour shift, that machine can produce 96 widgets. How do we figure that out? Well, it's simple math. Eight hours times 60 minutes equals 480 minutes. Then divide that by the five minutes it takes to produce one widget. 480 minutes divided by five equals 96 widgets. That's the machine's maximum capacity. But what if there's downtime? Let's say the operator is on a lunch break for an hour and takes two 15-minute breaks during the shift. So for the time the machine wasn't running, it's like this. 480 minutes minus one hour for lunch and 30 minutes for breaks equals 420 minutes. Now, how many widgets does the machine produce in that time? 420 divided by 5 equals 78 widgets. Now let's find the utilization rate. 78 widgets divided by 96 widgets equals 81.25%. That's the machine's utilization rate for the shift, basically how much of its potential capacity is being used. If the machine's utilization rate was higher, it could mean fewer breaks or perhaps increasing its speed. By understanding these calculations, you'll have a clear picture of how efficiently the operations are running. The best tip for handling operations problems 
is focus on the efficiency of resources, optimize the utilization rate. When faced with operations math, it's not just about knowing the numbers. It's about understanding how efficiently the resources like machines, workers, or time are being used. The key to improving operations lies in maximizing output while minimizing waste or downtime. In case interviews, take a moment to assess if you can improve utilization by adjusting schedules, reducing breaks, or increasing speed. This can quickly reveal opportunities for cost savings or increased productivity, two critical areas clients always care about. By looking beyond the raw numbers and focusing on how well resources are being used, you'll provide more insightful and actionable recommendations. So there you are, everything you need to know about the four types of case math problems you need to master. And if you're going through a case interview soon, I'd like to help you. Comment down below the firm and the city that you'll be interviewing for, and I will share with you some useful resources to pass it. For example, you can put McKinsey Berlin if that's your upcoming interview. My team and I are former consulting recruiters and interviewers who help applicants get and pass their interviews so they can land their consulting offer. To date, we have a 90% success rate. That means nine out of 10 applicants who work with us land at least one offer, and we've helped over 800 people already land a consulting job. If you are serious about becoming a management consultant and want to hear how we can help you, click on the link below to book a call with my team to find out more. Booking this call could put you one step closer to landing your offer at McKinsey and other management consulting firms. But you don't have to take my word for it. Hear it from town. Tom was able to land her dream offer at McKinsey despite having no experience with case interviews. I'll link to her video somewhere beside me. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.